assalamu alaikum yeah. in this part of the lecture we will talk about the most widely used basic databases related to structure and function of proteins so first of all uh, the structure of the structured database this was the database i talked about in the when we were discussing the history of bioinformatics mm -hmm. this was the first database which was developed for storing the protein structure information known as protein data bank and mm -hmm. till date in 2020 this is the most widely used structural database it contains all the primary source of information of protein structures and uh, the and all those structures are uh, three dimensional and the information available is of protein sequence mm -hmm. protein structures and protein nucleic acid complexes this is the key resource of information in structural biology every structural biologist uh, has to come to this database to download the and to access the information of protein structures from PDB and the file extension of the structures is dot star steric dot PDB just like you know that uh, the movie file is steric dot MMOV or MP4 similarly here it is steric dot PDB format and that PDB format is actually visualized using the these databases J, uh, these softwares JMOL, PyMOL and RASMOL yeah, it is very simple you just go on the structure uh, protein database download the stru structure or that is protein structure uh, static dot pdb and install this software very uh, simple software and you can simply visualize the structure three dimensionally from all, all angles all the um, loops structures so uh, beta sheets alpha helices everything and this gives us a, a structural view of the biology then there are protein classification databases which are uh, the most widely and the uh, uh, you can say the st uh, gold standard of in protein classification are CATH and SCOPE. CATH actually means CATH stands for class, architecture, topology, and homologous superfamilies, and SCOPE stands for structural classification of protein. All, uh, all both of the databases have same purpose of protein classification. Both classify into different topology and classes. And the difference is that uh, this is uh, this uh, is a hierarchical class uh, method. CATH has a hierarchical method, and it is semi-automatic. While SCOPE is cl classified into different uh, groups, and that is manually annotated. You know the difference between manually and uh, auto automatic. So SCOPE is, you can say, is, uh, in my opinion, better than CATH because it is also manually annotated. So if we talk about the scope database, uh, let's talk about one of them, scope structure classification of protein. This scope database actually class, uh, you can say, divide all the proteins information into four different types. One is class, other is fold, and then four superfamilies and fold family. What actually is class? Class is domains that have a similar structure structure belong to the same class. Secondary structures include alpha helices and beta sheets. So, it is a very broad uh, definition that is called class. That all the protein domains which have protein domains which have similar secondary structure, they come under one class. Uh, it is it means similar, not identical. You know the difference. And then fold fold is domains that have same secondary structure, same, and in the same arrangement are placed into a common fold. It means that it has the same secondary structure that number of alpha helices and beta sheets are same and also their arrangement is also same like uh, the in in the domains of those proteins then they all those proteins are class uh, classified into one fold fold super family is the pro the protein classification uh, family where the domains that have low sequence identity but possess common structural core and similar bio biochemical properties are placed into superfamilies. It means that at the sequence level their identity is less, but the core structural property or biochemical property, for example, the binding sites of the protein or the active sites, they are they ha they are similar or they have a similarity at structural level. They are placed into one fold superfamily and then there's a fold family all the domains that have sequence have high sequence structural identity are placed into a common family so there are three or four different uh, classification uh, you can say groups under in under in 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 scope right 
So uh, let's uh, now talk about the functional database. That is, uh, uh, I'm just talking about the main uh, wild, uh, and the most widely used databases uh, in uh, in different fields. So here we we'll talk about the structure uh, functional database. That is the Gene Ontology database. That is called Gene Ontology Consortium and stands as GO. All the information stored in this is based on functional information, based on functional level. For example, there are three types of functions of a one gene or one uh, gene prod of a group of genes that can be into a biological processes molecular functions and cellular components so biological comp processes you means the overall biological function of the genes and then molecular function at the molecular level what is the function of that protein at genetic level at gene expression level and then cellular component at, at what cellular location they, they perform what type of function so th based on these three terms the, the gene products or genes are classified in gene consortium and they they should have the species independent description they this database does not have any species classification like this gene has belong belongs to uh, mouse species or this gene belongs to human species this is only based on function so all the for example here you can see that there is example of tissue regeneration right here you can see this one a very beautiful circle i made here this uh, tissue regeneration is one function and all the proteins irrespective of the species uh, because uh, the genes are similar between the species so all the genes irrespective of species uh, which are related to tissue regeneration can be classified into un under one excision number that is this one which is slightly visible but you can just search and uh, check the uh, information related to tissue regeneration and you can find the, all the gene products uh, under one function. So this is the gene functional database. And this is a major bioinformatic initiative because that is uh, related to a unique type that is a function. Previously, we talked about gene sequences and structures. So now uh, let's talk about one specialized database that is ProSide. And that is a secondary database uh, and why it is important because sometimes a newly sequenced protein gives no hit to sequence databases so how do we determine its function so now let's say we uh, what does that mean that if we have a sequence and we put it in the protein database and run blast basic local alignment search tool and we do not find find any hit then what how can we find the function of that protein because uh, and according to the results there is no information related to that but as you can see the uh, quotation uh, here that is written by A.M. Lesk in 1988 that some cases the structure and function of an unknown protein which is too distantly related to any protein of known structure to detect its affinity by overall sequence alignment may be identified by its possession of a particular cluster of residue types mm -hmm. classified as motifs. It is a very detailed uh, sentence it means that sometimes the, two, the sequence which you are comparing with the database is too distantly related that there is very very uh, high divergence in sequence very low similarity right and based on the sequence alignment we it gives uh, after the blast result that there is no significant alignment it means that the overall alignment is poor but there is a possibility that there is a small cluster of residues types classified as motifs those are present which were not uh, given by the result because the overall alignment is poor so it said that the whole result according to the result there is no sequence alignment but how to find those motifs uh, the which are the motifs or templates or fingerprints arise because of a particular requirement of a binding site right so these motifs can be binding sites and these types of information or motifs can be identified from this type of database that is pro site and uh, how these uh, motifs remain intact or do not change and uh, at a very small level because uh, as you can read here that the more these motifs uh, arise because of a particular requirements of binding sites that impose very tight constraint on the evolution of portion of a protein sequence that that requirement of a binding site of that protein it means that this particular region the small part uh, that is motif is functionally so important that evolution 
does not change that part the part never change that and in the future uh, that portion of the protein sequence is very important so it is not evolved or there is no mutation or no change so even if the sequences mm -hmm. which are too distantly related and they were uh, they were not identified by overall alignment can be identified uh, as functionally relevant if we find this site that is called motif right so I think it's clear. So uh, basically, if we uh, see that patterns, those patterns are identified by multiple sequence alignment. How do those patterns which are present in the motivated proteoprozoite database are identified? That is by multiple sequence alignment that multiple species were compared and the regions which were cons conserved, totally conserved between the regions uh, were selected because they could be any important binding site or uh, attachment site or catalytic site and that that particular site is essential for proteins function so here you can see that there are names of species which are written here homo sapiens pantroglodytes those are chimpanzees macaca mulata that is uh, monkey canis lupus familiaris that is dog boss taurus is cattle mus musculus is uh, mouse ratus norvegicus is rat gallus gallus is chicken danio rario is zebra fish so the, the multiple species for example here primates uh, mammals rodents birds and fishes are compared and the and the after comparing the sequence of any specific gene they find the conserved sites so in the class i will ask about the uh, common names of these uh, the of these species that what does this mus musculus means in ratus norgepigicus means and i will ask by names so keep that in your mind and and remember these names right prepare yourself for the class then there is one more database and there are uh, you name it there are a lot of databases but here I am covering all those which are important for even all the biologists to know so that they can infer, infer the basic information this is again one specialized database and that is called database for the annotation visualization and integrate integrate integrated discovery that is David we will uh, see these uh, in the lab probably mm -hmm. uh, the main uh, uh, reason or the importance of this is that if we give any uh, information of any gene in this database there are three major features which it cover that is functional annotation gene functional classification or gene id convergence so functional annotation means that all the information it uh, takes all the information from multiple data for example uh, we write any gene name gene a right this is a gene a so when we write this gene a in this part where it, that it is written functional notation it will access or uh, accumulate all the information present related to the function of this gene from different databases and provide you with the summarized result of all those from all those databases right and gene functional classification into different categories uh, we will discuss these in the lab that uh, uh, based on different pathways, uh, what are uh, the function of these based on pathways, subcellular location, molecular function, disease related information, all these are identified from in this that if we try to find the functional information of all those genes. Then gene ID conversion. This is very important because in data in, uh, in biology, we talk of any uh, name of a gene. For example, let's say there is a gene that is called HER2. HER2, but it's another name is uh, ER, EGFR, ERBB2. So they, they, these are the families, right? ERBB family. And uh, the name when we're talking about the protein name is different. Uh, nucleotide gene name is different. So if we want to make a uniform conversion, for example, we have 100 different genes and we want to know the, uh, for example, we just want to have the protein name of all the genes. So we just put all the sequence all the gene names into this this uh, conversion part and get all the information there are all many other things which we can do on they uh, are using the david database uh, we will discuss these in the in the lab hopefully lastly there are uh, some other pathway databases right we always talk about that this is you may, you may have studied cell communication uh, where we talk about that this gene belongs to this pathway this is a map signaling pathway this is a ras signaling pathway this is a cell cycle pathway this is a uh, fibroblast pathway this so there are wind signaling pathway right there are so many pathways which we uh, read or know 
or we have discussed during our during the lab during during our co bio bio molecular biology cell signaling or cell biology courses but uh, yeah and all those pathways all the possible pathways are uh, which were, which are known or predicted or manually curated are present in these databases these are the three major databases which are used by different uh, uh, by different uh, you can say these uh, databases for example we talk about david david uses this keg pathway information and then uh, biocarta is another database and reactome is another database they have there are slight uh, differences in their classification for example keg and reactome are more of a manually annotated pathways and uh, biocarta is also contains predicted, predicted information we have i have shared the links here i'll share the slide you guys can go uh, on these pathways and just play around uh, in the meanwhile when we discuss these things in the lab so uh, why i shared these the names that if we if you want to know and get information about any pathways you have you should go on these three major database uh, pathway databases right yes so there is here we concluded and the databases continue there are so many more databases but in this whole uh, course or in this sorry in this lecture i only talked about uh, the basic uh, databases which are routinely used now again there are other which we will uh, disease related databases expression related databases any polymorphism related databases cancer disease spe specific disease related databases genetic disorder databases or any virus related databases all those things can be uh, all all those databases are available on uh, on the, uh, on you can say online but we will discuss later when we in, uh, when we will have to discuss those but uh, for now i think uh, i have tried to summarize all the basic databases which are which can be used by all the biologists at undergrad or grad level thank you uh, let's come up with the new topic uh, from the next class assalamu alaikum